In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred and saving mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins, and let us ask God for his pardon and for his peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in their daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at the table. Brothers, select from among yourselves seven reputable men, filled with the spirit of wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicola, Timon, Romanos, and Nicholas of Antioch, a current a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greater. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsory, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we pray. 
place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord, praise for the uprightness fitted. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp with the string, with the ten string lyre, and chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and light. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a holy priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. The only good thing about this coronavirus situation, for me at least, is that I don't have to go on business trips anymore. And yes, priests and religious also go on business trips. And I hate them just as much now as when I worked in the corporate world as a buyer for Barnes & Noble bookstore, that I had to go on all these trips across the country to visit and evaluate stores that all looked alike anyway, whether they were in Salt Lake City or in Atlanta or Cleveland or Paramus, New Jersey. And as a member of the council for my Capuchin province, until very recently I had to make all these trips to White Plains and Yonkers and Middletown, Connecticut and Boston, and I dreaded each and every one. Not that I don't want to see my Capuchin brothers, of course I do, I love them. But I did not want to be away from what I know, from what I do every day. So invariably, inevitably, there was a moment in my trip to one of these places when I said to myself, I just want to go home. And if I was in, by myself in my car, as I usually was, I'd say it very loudly, I'd say it very forcibly, even before I got to exit 16 on the throughway, I would say, I want to go home. And more than once, I'm sure drivers of the cars around me saw me do that and thought I was crazy. And I'm sure I am. I am crazy, but I still wanted to be home. I wanted to be home instead of where I was going. Because no matter how humble it is, there's no place like home to quote a famous film. And home is all that we basically want. For what is a home than just a place where we feel safe and protected, where we know where everything is, where, where we're comfortable, but we're at peace. And I think that's why Jesus used that language of home in the passage that we just heard from John's Gospel. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. And dwelling place is another word for home. And when we are privileged to enter the everlasting life of heaven, our Father's home, whenever that will be, and I hope it's many, many years before that happens, then we will be where we always long to be, and where we are meant to be, whether we're conscious of it or not. But as always with our faith, it's not just about the next world. Yes, the everlasting life of heaven is our ultimate goal. It's all we're striving to attain. But Jesus rarely talked about the next life. When he spoke about the kingdom of God, when he spoke, of, when he spoke about eternal life, and he did that all the time, he almost always meant the life of this world, of how we can know God and be united to God in the here and the now, of how we can bring about the kingdom of God, how God wants the world to be while we're still on earth. And coming home to God is much more simple, much more fundamental, much more able to be achieved than we sometimes think. Because we already have God within us and all around us. And to come home to God is to realize that yes, we are alienated from Him and from His purposes for ourselves and for the world. In other, words, in other words, to realize that we are sinners in need of the healing that we receive from Him that He so freely gives. And then to realize that God has destined each and every one of us to know Him and to love Him, each in our own particular and unique way. 
Because after all, as Jesus said, there are many dwelling places with the Father. And when we come back to God, we feel like we've never left. We feel like we are where we should be. Because that is where we should be. And we feel safe and protected. And we feel comfortable. We feel at peace. And because of that, we're ready to face the world. And if we wander away, if we leave home, we will at one point or another, of course we will, we still know that we can find our way home. That the Lord is guiding us and putting us back on the right path again and again and again. Because He wants us home with Him even more than we do, or at least just as much. And the best part of it is that even though it may take a while for us to get back home, you can still enjoy the trip back. Because as St. Catherine of Siena famously said, all the way to heaven is heaven. And we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Whoever believes in Jesus will do the work of the Father and come to know God's redeeming love. In confidence, we bring to God our prayers and petitions. For the church, that we may live as God's chosen people and follow Christ, who is our way, our truth, and our life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling to understand Christ, that the Spirit will lead them to recognize the works of God in their lives and the world around them as a sign of God's love and presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed or underemployed, for their perseverance, and that they get the help they need to get by, and that they find employment at a fair and just wage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will restore all to health who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that He God will guide the researchers in finding an effective treatment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of our mass, Gustavo Perez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have been called to the house of the Father, especially Linda Bowen, Martin Fulham Sr., Joseph Chafiki, and Nicola Carabola, that they may be experiencing the eternal life promised to them in baptism, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the needs entrusted to our book of intentions, and for the intentions we hold within the silence of our hearts. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today, being Mother's Day, we pray for all of our mothers. We pray for our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have died, that God may bring them into the joy of his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless our mothers, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love always shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed With humble spirit and contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and most truly our patron, St. Francis and St. Clair, on whose constant accession in your presence we rely for unfailing hope. May the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity with your pilgrim church on earth, our Pope Francis, our local bishop, Timothy, with the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, especially Gustavo Perez, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be For those who cannot receive at this time, you offer an act of spiritual communion. At thy feet, O my Jesus, I prostrate myself and offer thee repentance of my contrite heart, which is humbled in its nothingness and in thy holy presence. I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love, the ineffable Eucharist. I desire to receive thee into the poor dwelling that my heart offers thee. While waiting for the happiness of sacramental communion, I wish to possess thee in spirit. Come to me, O my Jesus, since I, for my part, am, am coming to thee. May thy love embrace my whole being in life and in death. I believe in thee, I hope in thee, and I love thee. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.